Hi Lori, uh, it's Cassidy. I wanted to take the time to make you the video about um, how I use Schoology to set up my courses um, for my students. Uh, I decided that I was gonna show you around my eighth grade classroom um, just for the fact that right now I'm only teaching high school credit recovery courses. In those courses I use Edgenuity and you wouldn't get to see the breadth of Schoology um, that I use. So I thought the eighth grade class would be close enough to high school um, in the, the setup when I do teach a high school class is very, very similar to this. Um, the only thing maybe different would be like uh, how many assignments per week, um, expectations changing, but we do expect our um, full-time middle schoolers and high schoolers to work five to seven hours in each of their classes each week. And so this is my online classroom for my eighth graders. Um, I have two naughty basset hounds, a five month old and a three year old little guy. Um, and so my class portraits are always of basset hounds because I think they're adorable. So uh, this is the home screen when you come into my course, um, just like in our Schoology course, uh, it lists all the different courses that I'm teaching here. Um, we have the different groups for our teacher group, a student group where in our different clubs um, that are on the group so that uh, we can always do different activities with students. We can give them individual feedback on uh, the student group for activities going on, just basic information stuff there. Um, so the first thing that you'll notice is that I keep um, my picture and all of my contact information up here at the very top all year. This little banner does not change. Um, these are just things that I've put into place to make my life a little bit easier. Uh, kids are always saying they can't find numbers to contact um, parents or, I'm sorry, teachers and parents have said, can you just leave it there? And so, yep, I've just left it at the top of my course um, from the very beginning all the way through the end. Um, it does have my cell phone, my um, email, but then I have a couple different things here. So this is where if a student wants to have an individual appointment with me, they can come to this link and it will take them to my sign up page of when they can sign up for individual appointments with me. Um, these are all done over the phone with my students, um, but it's just a way that they can request a one on one session with me so we can go over any materials. Um, this other one here is a late work form. It's just a quick Google form, um, but because I, uh, I allow my students to revise and resubmit their assignments as much as they would like to, this just helps me keep, it, keep track of what needs to be regraded and what was submitted late. And if the kid has an IEP or a 504, they put that in the note to Hetzel and it reminds me just to go check their accommodations um, before I grade their assignments kind of thing. Um, so when they fill this out, it actually populates to this spreadsheet for me so I can see exactly which students have assignments that they need me to grade and what needs to be done for them. Um, and it's just, it really helps me keep track of my kids and all the work that needs to be graded. So those are the uh, main things from my um, little banner up here that stays here. Um, so then we have a rule that you're only allowed to have a total of um, three folders on this front page, on the materials page. Uh, our school has a norm that we want no more than three clicks for the student to have to get where they need to go. Um, and so this is how we have worked it. So you can see in here, I have my instructor information and course information. This is, you can get to know me. I have my video on how we adopted our son and all about the naughty basset hounds. And uh, you can just really see, kind of get to know me a little bit here. So if you were a student in my class just coming in, you could get to know me a little bit. And then of course I have um, the course syllabus for the course. Um, and that's really all that goes in that folder. Um, I don't access that folder, but at the beginning of each semester when I uh, set everything up, this is where everything is housed for me. So these are my course materials. This is where you will find all the materials for the course. So we do set it up with folders and it is another course norm that we include the dates on each folder so that the students can know exactly what time frame and when uh, they should be working on different assignments. Um, and within each folder, you can notice that you can color code color code your folders to uh, correspond with units or just to keep them very clear that they're different units. 
Um, a lot of teachers can also will choose to turn the folders red when students are no longer allowed to submit work from that unit. Um, I'm a very lenient teacher and I'm always ex willing to accept um, revisions and um, late work. So the, my late work is never closed so they can submit things to the very last day of school and I will grade them. Um, my grading policy is 90% credit. So I only take 10% off if it's late, which means they can still earn an A in the class and on the assignment. So that's important to me. Um, and then within actual folders, you can see that we've got session one and session two, both with weeks again. And one thing that you'll notice, let me go back here real quick, is you can see that it's kind of highlighted here that it's available after the eighth. So I can have folders ready and then not open them to the students until a certain day. So if I went in here and hit edit, I could choose whether I wanted it published on a start date, during a date range, or just to hide it from the students. So um, that's one thing that I really do appreciate is that if I am um, working ahead of the kids and just making sure that their materials are ready in the upcoming weeks, I can release it to set out to the kids, um, to send out to the kids on a certain day. Um, I usually open it up at midnight the night before when I actually start the session. Um, but I can choose that, and that's that's important to me. So I like that feature a lot. Um, within here, then, this is kind of what you'll see, like a normal kind of looking week for me. Um, my students work from Sunday to Sunday, um, and my deadlines are Sunday night at 11.59 for every assignment. So you'll notice that each one of these assignments, even though there are several different assignments here, they're all just due on Sunday at midnight. Um, you can choose that, of course, but um, it's all depending on how you want to do things. So this is kind of like a typical, um, what a typical week would look like for my course. Um, in Schoology's lagging behind my video making capabilities right now. And of course it just went down. Why wouldn't it go down when I'm making you your video? Uh-oh, did I lose my internet? Hold on, let me take a look at what's going on with my internet and I will be right back to finish this for you. Okay, so um, I'm sorry about my internet just crashing out there for a second, but this is kind of a typical week. Um, this is where I have my introduction video just to show the kids what's happening for the week um, and just get them previewed for what we're going to be doing. Uh, this is the suggested pacing schedule um, that I think I've mentioned with your course a couple times. Um, so they know exactly what they need to be doing on each day to meet my expectations for work for them for the week. So uh, this is one of the most important things I do each week is making sure that I have a schedule for the kids to follow. Um, and because this is, I'm in an introductory week right now, I also wanted to get the kids' phone numbers. And what's awesome about these Google Forms is that it automatically populates to a spreadsheet, just like I showed you with um, my late work form. So all of my kids' information is input by them, and it's automatically put into a spreadsheet that I can access at any point. Um, they have to include their parent name, number, um, nicknames, grade level, cell phone numbers, can they receive text? Um, all of those things automatically just get populated and I don't have to do any of the work trying to get that information from them. Um, another thing that I do often is I have my unit objectives and then I have an assignment where they have to make sense of the learning objectives. They have to identify what they're going to be doing over the course of the unit because if they can't identify what they're learning, what's the point? So I need to make sure that they're learning those objectives. And I don't wanna to go too screen by screen with you, but I also don't know how much depth you want to see on this. Um, so let's get out of the introductory unit and let's go into course materials here. And we'll go into origin of words real quick. So you can just see how I'm incorporating some technology and the blended learning uh, into my actual class because I'm really excited about how this unit turned out and the kids are doing a great job with it so far. Um, so this is roots, prefixes, and suffixes, some of the boring, dry stuff that I have to teach that's in my um, cap, uh, curriculum documents in my CAP. Um, and so again here, you can see that they've got the learning objectives 
and that they have to make sense of the learning objectives and then submit those objectives um, for it. And then here, I'm providing that why. We've talked about in the course on why it's important to know what they're studying. So I'm trying to give them that relevance uh, and I'm also trying to show that what we're doing is important. So um, always having a page in here with the why I think is important. Uh, and then we've got, what are they? What are roots, prefixes, and suffixes? So I have three little funny videos. They are rap songs and an explanation video for what a root, prefix, and suffix is. And this is where I really get into the blended learning aspect here. All of this content is delivered online and I meet with my students on Wednesdays for about an hour per class. And so uh, yesterday what I was able to do with my students was I was able to go over the assignments with them and we started to do a class poplet as well. And you'll see that here, um, what they're making in the next pages. So. Um, here's an instructional video of me walking them through. Hi, kiddos. Hi, kiddos. Hi, kiddos. Hi, here. Uh, walking them through this assignment. So even if they missed the blended day, um, they still got the same instruction that the kids got on the face-to-face -face day. So the main thing on this assignment is these are roof, roots, prefixes, and suffixes for 6th through 8th grade. This is a unit that these kiddos um, will do twice in 7th and 8th grade and they get to choose which prefixes they want, which suffixes they want to study, and which roots. So they have to pick a total of the 25 words from the roots, prefix, and suffix category, and then they will upload their choices to this Google Doc, and they'll submit it. And really, uh, what this does is it's just a really quick way for me to see which words they're going to be focusing on so that I can keep track of each kid's individual assignment and what their goals are because they get to each choose their own list. Uh, so here, that's where they submit that uh, information. And then here is where we're actually going to start working with those roots, prefixes, and suffixes. And they're actually going to use Quizlet to create their own study, uh, study flashcards. And within Quizlet, the flashcards, once you populate flashcards, it can automatically do writing tests, spelling tests, and multiple choice tests. It also creates two games for them to play. Um, so I would encourage you to play around with Quizlet. You can, um, by all means, uh, I'll send you the code to this course. Um, when I send you this video. So if you want to come in and play around and just take a look at what I'm doing, you'll have that access as well. Uh, and then the next assignment, that's where they submit, is Poplet. And we use Poplet within our uh, blended learning class together. And so this video, I walk them through how to create the Poplet, what their Poplet's going to look like when they have all 25 of their different words. And then yesterday on campus, um, because students were supposed to be working on this assignment on Tuesday and Wednesday, they came prepared on Wednesday to finish up the assignment. And they each had to choose their favorite root prefix or suffix, the one that they found the most interesting or they had the best examples for. And then we created a giant class poplet for all seventh and eighth graders to add their words on so that we could see how they are connecting to each other and to the other words and be exposed to even more content. Um, it's also really cool to watch a poplet come together that is created by two separate classes of seventh and eighth graders and how well that they can find connections with each other on that poplet. So that was really fun. Uh, the next thing that they'll do is they submit their poplet. Uh, and this is the end of this session. So then in the second session, um, they go in and we remind them again about their learning objectives. They have their new pacing guide so uh, and so much. Um, and then they have a different practice activity where here they're going to be doing a crossword puzzle versus word search. Uh, I've gotten in the past a few of the word searches when I've been looking for the crossword. So this little uh, graphic here is really simple for them to understand what I'm looking for. Um, I'm not going to walk you through all of this lesson, but I will tell you um, that Quizlet has a game called Gravity that in matching. So it does create two games for them to play. And as they get better and better at the games, it gets harder and harder and harder. And they have to get quicker at, at knowing what the test is on. 
So they have to get faster and faster at recognizing the roots and prefixes and suffixes and knowing that like here, uh, auto means self and that, you know, and that kind of thing. And so as they're playing, they're getting more and more practice. And this assignment with the, um, with playing the games, I want them to be getting the 85% or better. I want them to be uh, reaching comprehension on this. And so for me to see that they're getting that 85% or better is great because I know that they're getting the comprehension that they need. Um, one thing that I always do as well in any every single unit, and if not every single session, um, I do the learning objective reflection. And on this, it can be a very simple um, paragraph here. They need to write me a paragraph over the past two learning sessions. You've been working these goals in a PEA paragraph. Tell me how you've met these objectives. And if students can't tell me the how they've met the objective, then they have to have a one on one meeting with me and I walk them through how we've met the objectives and talk to them about that kind of thing. Um, the other thing I want to show you just real quick why I'm in here is some self-reporting that I do with my kids. Um, self-reporting is something that um, it, it is so helpful because when I know that the kids say that they're struggling, that is that's their key to that they are reaching out to me. Um, so I do a lot of pre-testing and I do a lot of self-reporting. And so here you can see that this unit has a built-in pre-learning self-evaluation. Um, they still have to do the making sense of the learning objectives. But then as they go through all of these different materials, they have to do a self-report. So here they have to tell me, all right, am I with you? Am I confused? Or am I all right, but I would really like to talk to Hetzel. And so if they put anything other than the thumbs up, they automatically get a call from me or an email from me so I can check in with them. Um, let's see if I can find one of my learning target bullet point ones. Uh, I think it's in this one. Let's double check. Yep, here it is. So here we've got the learning objectives reflection again. So this is where they have to come in and show me how they've met all of these um, different uh, objectives. And this is not the one I was looking for, but it's another PEA paragraph. And here you can see a, a movie about the PEA process that I've included. Uh, notice I've got a checklist. And then on the actual assignment page here, oh, where'd it go? Well, must have clicked on the wrong thing. Anyway, they um, the rubric for the writing shows up on the assignment for it as well. And I can probably show you that somewhere else. But let's see if I can find one of the learning target check-ins in here. Let's go here. Nope. Pause and find so, Lori, I wasn't able to find the one I was specifically looking for in the eighth grade class, but I did find one in my sixth grade class that I wanted to show you. And this is how I'm having kids self-report to me again. So here it's a quick check in um, that I want them to choose a picture, any school appropriate picture that depicts how they're feeling about how they're meeting the learning target for this session. So they can submit something like this that says nailed it or not good Hetzel and then making sure that they have their phone number included and here's the learning target. And so just to, um, let's see what Ketsy had to. Now that she submitted my picture, which is fine. Um, perfect. So, you know, it's a, it's a fun activity for them, but it's also getting me the information that I need. Um, so it's it's silly, but it works really, really well. Um, let's see if I can get to anything else that maybe you'd want to see. Um, oh, I will show you why we are in, in my sixth grade class. Um, one of my authentic, uh, authentic tasks that I just created um, that I'm trying to incorporate more of. Uh, and this was our blended learning day here. So uh, we talked about the text features and we looked for the text features. So like the title, the title page, the table of contents, all of these. 
Um, we did this on campus together and students had to go into their other classrooms and find the examples of the text features to submit. Um, so that was a really fun blended day where we were uh, looking around the temporary buildings that our school is housed in and kids were finding bullet points on the walls and they were running around the parking lot looking at the signs and what kind of information was, was presented on the signs. So just really fun stuff. Um, like I said, I'm going to send you the code to my eighth grade class. So if you'd like to join it just to kind of take a tour, a self-guided tour even, you're more than welcome to do that. Please let me know if this was helpful or if you need more or if I can show you anything else within Schoology. Um, I, I'm just so excited to help you and I just want to give you anything and everything that you could possibly need. So please let me know. And other than that, I'm going to sign off and hopefully this was at least somewhat helpful um, for you to see how my folders are organized and how um, the materials are organized, just kind of how everything works together. Um, so you can see here uh, that we talked about that unpublished. So I have this unit ready for them, but it's not going to open up until after spring break kind of thing. So that was kind of what I was showing you with the um, unpublished and availability there. Um, I think that's it. I hope this was helpful. I hope it was at least. Anyway, have a great rest of your day and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.